hello and welcome to Arts and Wellness Cafe. Thank you so much for joining me. And while you're here, have you got your little tipple? Whether it's um, alcohol based or natural based, I've got my rosemary and black tea here. Um, it's really nice. So, anyway, in this video today in the cafe, what are we going to be covering? We've got question and tip of the week. We've got a book review, lovely book that I want to share with you. We've got um, stitch projects. There's so many other little things that are happening, resources for you for free. So I hope if you stay until the end, you'll get to catch what the resources are and I'll link them in the description below. So let's get started. What is the word for the month? So the word for the month is inspired and comfort. So what does that mean for you? What does it mean? What does being inspired um, and comfort mean for you? Now, when I was thinking, um, when I was thinking about these words, I was thinking that, well, two things, we'll, we'll take inspired first. Now, there are a lot of things that inspire me. There are a lot of people that inspire me. And it's important for you to constantly surround yourself with inspiring things. And um, so you might say to yourself, oh, but I live here and there's nothing inspiring, nothing inspiring, inspiring about it. But it's how you look at something. Now, you can look at a flower growing and see the complexity of that flower and be inspired by that. I was out in the garden this morning and there's the, it's the crinium lily now the flowers that i've got the one that produces white flowers with a tinge of pink the flowers they produce are scented so i was there smelling this flower and i was thinking how can i capture this um scent now you can you know you put the, you can put the whole flower i think in oil leave it over time and the oil then the oil is infused with the scent of the flower but then I was thinking, is it the whole flower or is it just the stamens that stick up? So I took one of the unopened flowers and I opened it up and obviously none of it was ready and there was no scent on it. And it was just like maybe it's produced once it's opened up to attract, you know, the bees, the pollinators and the stamens, I think they're called, with the pollen on them. They normally sit and they kind of <laughs> flop around like this. Um, and the ones that were in this unopened flower wasn't it was orange but it wasn't loose because it wasn't ready so then i thought to myself okay so it's the open flower and i just went on this journey of okay so because it was like do i take the i'm hoping i'm not <laughs> saying the wrong words um anyway the stamens where the anyway or is it when I looked into the flower, there were these ants that were deep in the middle of the flower. And so it was just like, that's where the scent's emanating from. And the, the bees will come attracted to the scent and rub themselves up against, you know, the pollen. And then they maybe get some of the nectar in the, in the bottom of the flower. But the ants are right there in the bottom. So I was just like, okay. Yeah, so maybe you have to wait until the flowers open, get rid of the ants, <laughs> and then immerse it in oil. But I thought that was another, that was for another um, adventure in the garden. But it's some, something as simple as that that can make you feel inspired. Um, or, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by patterns and shapes and designs and colour and anything if I see something and it's it's something that is not familiar with me I'd like to make it um, I start thinking going down that process I'm always questioning I'm always asking I'm always you know looking at other artists and thinking you know um, I'm inspired by what they do inspired by their work the the the, the ideas that come from them and you know you it then inspires me to do things myself you know maybe i try a technique that they're using or a hint that they may have been given and that's what i like to be able to do to show artists the technique 
yeah, you can try and create like me, but what would happen if you took the technique that we're using and run with it yourself? If you played with it and, you know, tried different ways of using it. And I think that really excites me. So that's what makes me inspired. It, it could be one thing, seeing it in different, um, you know, uh, different ways. Um, taking, uh, creating an image and then using different supplies to create a similar image. You know, you don't have to create the same image, but you can, you know, try it with gesso as the base or try it with texture, try it with different colors, try it with uh, watercolor pencils or oils or, you know, etching an image into it. And so that's inspired for me. And comfort, there's two sides for me, the comfort. Comfort is, um, you know, getting to bed and just feeling all nice and cosy and um, sheets make a difference. <laughs> the quality of the sheets make a difference. I'm not into this, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, the Egyptian cotton and Barbadian Sea Island cotton is absolutely beautiful. Um, not that I have Barbadian Sea Island cotton sheets, but I felt it in um, uh, a scarf. There's a, a, um, a weaver on the island called um, Ade, Sylvester, and I'll even leave his link, um, I'll leave a reminder for myself to leave his link down below, but you have to look at some of his designs, it's, they're really beautiful, and he uses sea island, sea island cotton in some of his uh, scarves, he makes some really beautiful scarves. Anyway, um, comfort, what is comfort to you? Um, sitting down with a really nice cup of tea in a cosy chair, uh, feeling the breeze when I sit out on the patio at night and just listen to the tree frogs singing. But the other side of comfort is when you can get too comfortable. I don't want to get too comfortable because that's when you let things slide. You, um, you don't meet your deadlines or you think, oh yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. And, but you, you don't know what opportunities tomorrow is going to bring um, so do you know what I think I've got a um, there's a parakeet who visits my garden I'm trying to make my garden a haven for parakeets they do make a lot of noise though but that's okay, I want to see, there's a blue one that visited the garden a few months ago, but they like the, um, uh, what is it they like, the Pride of Barbados, the seeds from the Pride of Barbados, um, they love that and they split it open and that's what I can hear them cracking it open. They also like the trumpet, the drumsticks that come from the um, Moringa tree and they split those open and eat the seeds. So and that's a really beautiful feeling for me. Anyway, so comfort and inspire. Think about those two words as you go through uh, the month, the rest of the month, and you know, just try and think, what is it that's making you feel inspired? What can you find to make you feel inspired? And that also links in, we're gonna cover that um, when we come down to tip for the week. Um, but yeah, I want you to think about that word, those two words, and you know, maybe even, you know, journal about it, maybe even, you know, write in your notes. One of the things I wanted to start up again for myself this month is my morning pages. I had been, um, I normally just kind of do a an art journal page and within it I put my thoughts and feelings and I'll still be doing that but I do like the you know just writing um, three pages and getting out the first kind of you know the tip from the morning the bits that that are there when you wake up and maybe kind of going around in your head and just get those down on paper. Sometimes for me it's ideas and things I want to try and if I don't get them down quickly then it's just like they just disappear off to somebody else who's going to wake up with them. Anyway, so let us um, 
look at an art journal. We're going to look at an art journal and I will show you a small one that I've been working on and I'll give you some of the, um, the things that has inspired me about it. So this is the mini journal I wanted to show you and we're going to have a flip through of this one. So it's kind of just made from pieces of card and then I stitched it down the middle. So let's have a look. So I've got a um, envelope, mini envelope making um, punch. So I can make envelopes. That was one of my best purchases. And then I've filled it with, you know, I have lots of little toppers that are in a container and um, I've had them for years and I've been building on it for years whenever I have like off cuts or if I've um, trialing a stamp then you know I'll stamp it and if you've done it several times then you know what do you do with the ones left over so I've just created little toppers and then added them here shapes as well and then the last thing in here was that I had I've got loads of glitter so I'm trying to use the glitter I brought the glitter because I wanted to use it I've got different grades of glitter very really fine and the more coarser ones and I've been adding it to um, glue and then using it through this is a uh, sequin waste um, but adding it through stencil and seeing what I get so as I say this is made from lots of things that I've cut out and um, we've got even got some neurographic inspired shapes going on in the book as well because I love working with ink I love mark making and so I just wanted to have a small space that I could do this in So again, this is a great idea for having small journals that you create. I've got another one here. Um, I've only just placed an image on and then I was having, I was looking through some stickers that I had little, um, this is like a glossy sticker. And I thought that can go there. And that's all I need to do. That's the only page that, uh, these are the only two pages have got anything on it. And um, that's waiting for me to do something at a later date but I can use that especially if I don't want to do you know a big giant page but I just want to add a few a few small things you know some cut out flowers some quotes some words I can come back in here and where I've got black lines I can go in and add another color on top or where it's white here I can you know there's space to do so many things some stars I never use stars um, I've got loads of these stars but um, it's just like found a use for them now textures there's a lot of texture going on here different papers here, handmade paper. And I had some on the back, these are just a jigsaw puzzle. I stamped on it. And then I've got this little bear. Um, I was using card making, but I never did use them. I've got loads of them. So again, you know, make use of the things that you have and um, you can bring yourself some joy. So I followed on the glitter theme in another book. So I'll just show you this page. <laughs> it's full on. So I just took my time and we've got um, three, four different types of glitter. So I had to do it in stages with the different colors. 
Um, but I liked how it turned out. It's very vibrant, and uh, yeah, I think that turned out quite nicely. Yeah, so this is a, a nice little um, journal. I really like it. I like making these small ones, and I have others that I make. You know, I just create them, um, stitch them very simply, and um, I haven't yet. Um, added much to this one yet and I've got the smaller ones which you would have seen the little uh, tiny ones that I've made that's really nice anyway so um, the other thing that has that was a really large thing was the 100 day project and it's amazing to think how quickly a hundred days passed and if you had contemplated doing the 100 day project and you decided not to I mean that's fine you do what you can and you know if not then you know you're doing whatever you you know other things that you need to do but if you've taken and stayed with the project you do definitely come out I think you do, from any challenge you can come out differently and you can um, again with that word be inspired to carry on doing other stuff so I was amazed at all of the foam art you know the art the foam stamps that I had and I'm looking at most of them are over there on a um, ledge um, what I've got to do now is decide where I'm gonna put them and I've got some others that I created some new ones so there's more than a hundred um, that it's just like I need to find I want to find a space that or a container that I can see the stamps and I'll continue to use them on a regular basis and maybe that's not a practical thing you know to be able to visually see them so maybe they do just have to go in a container I've got my book, the other good thing that came out of it was I've got my book of um, all the stamps that I've created and I've put the new ones in there and so this is then great for me to be able to see, okay, you know, I'm going to work with this. So maybe with every project I just say to myself, use one of your handmade stamps and I can have a look through this book. I do just want to make it, um, you know, specifically, yes, this is what the book is. At the moment it was a, it was a photo scrapbook. <laughs> but it's come in handy because it's just like I've, I've had it for years and it never got used. Um, so the other thing that's come out of it is the paintings that I did. And you can see them here. So I did 15 paintings and I have had some inquiries so I was thinking okay you know um, I'm gonna put the paintings the originals up for sale and I'm gonna have some prints of those so they'll either be on my Etsy or my one of my platforms but I will let you know when they're available and I'll be selling some of these stamps so when I started the project I hadn't been using the um, my it's my wood burning tool that I've been using to, to burn into the foam and it was just like why did I not think of this from before it was just like I never thought about how I would mark into the foam but that's got me um, wanting to um, work with my I've got some carved the uh, foam that you can carve um, and I've got some blocks left. It's not that many, but I'm thinking of maybe just doing some kind of abstract designs. There's some designs that I've been doing on, um, I can actually show you. I can show you um, design that I've been doing, designs that I've been doing, similar to my, um, the stuff that I've been doing with the neurographic art. But there are just some, um, just kind of different. So I've 
kept them simple and I really like the way that they are and I'm going to be turning some of those into digital stamps that you can print on papers and collage into you know art journals um, the other thing yeah because um, as I said I was interested in I was interested in uh, carving the stamps and there was one of not one of the artists or who were who was on the um, who did the 100 day project she did 100 days of carving stamps and her stamps were beautiful and we kind of connected and she sent me um, a couple of her prints and I've used them and she sent a couple of other things in her letter and I've just used it on a journal page and um, Susie <laughs> that's uh, the stuff that you sent me hopefully you should have got my letter um, by the time you see this anyway so um, yeah or maybe not actually um, but yeah so she did some really beautiful calf stamps and I'll leave her um, Instagram link and you can you can go and have a look I just loved it just really connected with me some of her stamps and there was loads of other people whose um, 100 day projects were just so inspiring and so it's definitely if you put in hashtag the uh, do the 100 day project you'll come across um, a load of other artists um, and creatives and you know you don't have to wait until this big organized thing it's nice to do it with um, other people doing it as well because it's quite motivating and inspiring again inspiring to um, you you kind of like you know a kind of encouraged seeing other people's and yeah there's another lady who did these they just look like they almost look like they're, they're stamps as well but she has so many different pastel colors it's just like it's just so beautiful and they're just small um, small stamps um, maybe three by three inches but they look so cute and when you see them all together it's lovely I can't remember her uh, details or I'll put it in the um, link below so yeah I've been um, thinking about how you know once you come to the end of something what do you um, how do you feel and when I came to the end of the 100 day project it was just like um, I, I had other things that were going on but it just makes you want to just take a step back and um, I used to fight it and used to get really annoyed at that feeling like I didn't want to do anything um, but sometimes you just have to maybe give yourself a break and do something else um, you know do something other thing that's creative like I will go out in my garden and say you know <laughs> connect with the plants and um, you know do something that's totally different or tidy up your studio or look for other materials to work with to get you into a different phase and I guess it was a, a concentrated you know focused on handmade foam stamps and my art paintings and things like that that yeah you know sometimes you do have to take a break but I think you know one of the things you need to do and that will link us to tip for the week so let's go to tip for the week and I will talk about that <laughs> Tip for the week. Tip for the week. Tip for the week. So, it's it's really about being um, motivated and organised. So, as I was sharing prior, in the foam art stamps, um, the foam stamps. When I came to the end, I didn't feel like doing anything, and sometimes you don't, and it doesn't necessarily um, follow that you're doing a big project and then you come to the end and you don't feel motivated sometimes you just don't feel motivated at all so one of the ways that I get around this is so this was um, a question one of the questions I was asked on my patreon that I said I would share so <laughs> this is um, so when you don't feel motivated I find one of the best things for me is to have a variety of little projects going on so as a mixed media artist I've always got something going on I've always got my art journals near 
um, if you've taken my filling in the creative well course you will know that we've made um, this is a composition notebook um, and I've made a journal from it but in it it's got a whole list of activities well questions that I can go in and answer I can um, it's got words which I can talk about how it made me feel there's different activities um, that are in that encompasses the fill in the creative well and that was the whole point of me creating the course because it was for those times that um, if you're not feeling motivated it might mean that your well is depleted you need to look at self-care you need to look at how much rest you're getting you need to look at whether you've nurtured yourself and these are the things that you constantly have to do you know if you've got a car you take it for a service on a regular basis you fill up the oil you fill up the petrol otherwise it won't move and you ask your body to perform a variety of different tasks to move you around the place to be working for your mind to be thinking um, <laughs> to be reflecting on different things to interact to engage to plan and create so you're putting a lot of demands on your body but what are you doing so that your body um, stays in in tip top form eating right you know exercising one of the things that I've started doing um, and this is my second week is going to bed before 11 I would normally be 12.30 was around my time and I'm getting up at 6.30 so I'm not getting as, as much sleep as I need um, and so going to bed I listened to this talk and it said going to bed before um, so by 10.30 I should be making my way into bed so by 11 I'm in bed you know ready to sleep and stuff like that and I go off like <laughs> a few minutes it takes me to go off to sleep um, but I realized that I wasn't getting enough rest so it was just like okay I need to put that in place you know you're getting aches and pains and it's just like why is this happening you know your body's not being able to repair itself and to deal with anything that may be coming up so getting enough rest, enough rest is one thing making sure nutritionally that you're getting enough nutrition nutrition your your body's balanced um, and fresh air sunlight and all of that but in terms of the creative aspect having these different things so I have this and I'm always writing in it. I've got mini journals stuffed in these matchboxes. I created matchbox holders with mini journals. Um, I've got um, bowls with this bowl behind me here that was made as part of the fill in the creative well, which holds encouraging words. You have to put things in place to enable you to be creative. So I will go into the bowl pick out an encouraging word for that day and um, for the Arts and Wellness Cafe for this day it's comfort and it's inspire and um, or inspired and um, you know you have to also think about trying new things what new things can you try what new supplies can you try um, do you need to tidy up your space? Do you need to create a new space for something? Do you need to get rid of some things? You know, there may be some supplies that you're really not, and I was, was going to say, you're really not going to use, but that it comes in cycles. Like I, I kind of, in cycles, will leave something and then come back and find a new use for it. Um, but if you've got multiple, you know, why not? share that why not maybe give that away and then you create a new space and you can fill it with new things <laughs> so that's the tip for the week um encompassed encompassed in all of that it's about providing yourself with additional things that you can do when you're not feeling like it you may be feeling like just tidying up your space you may feel like just adding color to a page 
and that's the start of a journal, you know, that's the start of a background page. It may be that you've got a bag full of papers and you do some collage. So, you know, you're setting your environment up for you to be able to reach out and use that thing when the time comes. Um, you know, stitch projects, we've got a nice stitch project coming up. But um, yeah, so that's tip for the week. So Okay, so now we're going to look at the book review and we're going to be looking at the book Intertwined. Let's get started. So here we have the book Intertwined, The Art of Hand Spun Yarn, Modern Patterns and Creative Spinning. Now the thing that attracted me immediately was all of this beautiful yarn on the front. I'm a beginner in hand spinning cotton and I just wanted to have a book that um, would give me some more insight and this actually does you know you it gives you some beautiful imagery not only of the natural world but how it's recreated in the textile world and it's full of inspiring um, yarn and I say inspiring yarn because they just absolutely look beautiful and you just want to be able to create and you know potentially make now it also tells you the type of yarn you can use um, for different types of work and it encourages you to experiment it encourages you to not only learn the techniques for doing something but then breaking the rules you know once you know how to do something it's then easy to say maybe add your own flair or combine several at the same time now all of the projects it gives you a selection of projects that you can wear or you can make and it um, also tells you the type of skills that are required sometimes you may need to be able to read patterns but it's definitely a doable thing if you are um, new to it then you know um, take in the information and learn what's here but you will have um, some lovely projects that you can also then go on to do it's definitely a book for those who are interested in textiles and textile arts and even those who are wanting to learn how to work with textiles and I think it's a lovely book to be able to help you think out of the box and um, experiment because I mean when did you last see shredded paper used in yarn and and how how <laughs> how this is yeah this is a lovely book and it shows you how to do it if you want to do it it shows you how to do it and the colors are beautiful and it shows you again all the different techniques and it shows you at a glance how you need to do it, how you need to hold your hands. So it's definitely one I would suggest that you get and it's one that you can, you know, dip in and out of and, you know, read it and experiment and then come back. Um, she also has a selection of artists who also share some of their stories and some of their projects and it's again nice to be able to get different artists perspective on creating different things as well as you know the main um, artists as well so yeah it's got a lot of different projects that you can be getting on with and um, at the back it gives you resources yeah so what did you think of the book so um 
Yeah, as I say, this is, um, on the back it says this is a book for fibre lovers. And I saw it and I saw the image on the front. And it was around the time that I was getting into spinning the cotton that I had harvested from my garden. I saw this book and it was just like, I have to have it. And I just love, you know, again, that's a great way of, you know, it's not something I'll do full time. I do like, love working with fabric. Um, I'm not going to be spinning and making my own yarn full time, but it's something that I can dip into that when I'm, you know, feeling, not necessarily feeling 100%, I can go and encourage myself by looking through all the glorious um, ideas that are here and maybe even, you know, take out my crochet or knitting needles and make something from it. It's time for quick question. Quick question. Quick question. Quick question. So the quick question for today, this week, is right. What, what would you do if you change your perspective? So the reason why, um, one of the reasons why I find that that's a really great question is often when you change, when you're looking at something, it makes you feel a particular way, you know, you've got, um, you know, feelings that you may have about it, or based on your experience, you, you're thinking about, you know, it makes you think about a certain thing, or you just get used to things being that way. And often when you change the way you look at something, or you do something that's different, when you look at again at that thing, it looks different, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to have a closer look at some of my stitch projects. Let's have a look at this. Okay, come on. Okay, so this is the project I'm currently working on and I'll tell you a bit more about it. But after my um, 100 days of foam, I went out and I brought myself a few bits so these um, this is a 14 and a 12 inch um, hoop what else did I buy I brought some threads and I brought some actually yeah I brought some stamps didn't I anyway but they've been put away so I wanted to get back to working with the fabric um, and let me just show you this first. What I started out by doing is um, I want to experiment with I want to experiment with the stamps on fabric. So let's come in here. Oops. Yeah, there. So I've taken some of the foam stamps and used uh, black ink on them. And I think, I, lo I love the way they've come out like this. I think I've got here, I did this, the, um, this owl. And this is one of the patterns. I really like that. And this is made from Fimo. And then I've got some house stamps. Could I have put any others in there? I think that's the... Oh yeah, this one here. I love the way this one looks. So I'm going to enjoy working on this page. Um, it's like a building and then on top, well you can see. <laughs> and then all I've done is I did the main stamp and then I just did half the stamp here. So that it looks like it's a row. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to working on there. I did, I don't know whether you can see the tree. So this is one of the newer stamps that I did. I didn't show it as part of the 100 day project, but I'm going to be working more on some of the fabric that I've got. And it really did come out well with um, the stamp on fabric. And in this one, we've got a few people down there. So I'm looking forward to um, working in this fabric journal. And I have this, this journal so that I can experiment, you know, and it's something that I can take around with me. I can put my 
um, needles and some embroidery thread in here. The only thing with this fabric is it's when you add gesso it gets quite thick so this is just um, this is how it is normally but it firms up once it's got paint and stuff on there so it's a, it, sometimes it can be harder to um, push a needle through there um, yeah so we'll see how we get on um, but we'll look at the main stitch project that I wanted to show you okay so this piece um, let's come back out oops quit there right so this piece we've got quite a few different techniques going on we've got the um, I did I tried some shibori dyeing technique and so I dyed this first it's not with a natural dye it's um, just with a shop brought dye so I created um, some shapes on here and then dyed it and then when we look down the sides we've got some circles that have had um, some painted fabrics and I've cut them out in circles there and along here and then what happened to this piece is I stitched them on using a machine and just did some random shapes around them like so this middle panel here is a combination of jeans material so I collect a range of different types of material and then put them together we've got some African material here we've got jeans material we've got some recycled material in the middle all on a dyed panel here this panel underneath was hand dyed as well do you need to see some of the detail there so I've just taken little shapes and you know um, this was a project in itself it was you know I'm sitting um, I, I create these projects so that I can be you know I can stitch the small panels and then the small panels can go on to bigger panels so we've got as I say different elements here several different elements brought together and I used the machine to join join them and then I went in around the edge and did some hand stitching and then these bits as well they were just fragments but put together like this and add in some slow stitching actually it's not only a therapeutic activity I, I I like the look of it and then once this gets to a point where it's nearing the finishing then um, you've got some other lovely things that will come out of it so I wanted to show you just a bit of a close-up of so these panels were created um, it was a large piece of material that was painted doodled upon written upon and then cut out and so you can see on oh, the colors lovely so I just spent you know time with this with this particular material and just spent time playing with the paints and um, dimensional paints the metallic paints and just worked and see what go what went well with one another and then when I was ready cut them up but they're really nice and I will show you um, probably on the gram I'll show you the close-ups of all of these so um, let's come out now and you can see the full thing so what I then went round and did is use the white thread and slow stitched around it and now I'm working on this blue th with this blue thread in spots 
um, and I'm just seeing where the threads want to be taken. I'm now working on some of these mini panels and adding some blue thread in them um, and the blue is a similar colour to some of the paint that is in some of them so I wanted to just make that connection and um, I'm not quite sure where else I'm going to take this um, I might then go on to look for a backing material or I might go on and look at am I going to put some embellishments on there I do like adding beading and, and um, broken jewellery and things like that to the pieces so that's probably where this is going to be taken but every um, Monday is it every Monday we're doing a um, on my YouTube channel I'm going to be doing Material Mondays and you'll be able to see a stitched project and we may even do some stitching um, on the day I'm not sure but I'll show you a stitch project and what the idea behind it and that's really an encouragement for me as well just to get on with some <laughs> get on with some yeah so I probably will do some stitching as well but it just helps helps um, get get on with some of the work because you can be there chatting about the work and you just need to be you know doing doing it and getting it finished um, and I've got loads of projects that's that's one of the reasons why I did um, I've got loads of projects that I want to complete that are stitched pieces and I want to kind of get them out there um, and um, for them to find a loving home <laughs> but uh, you have to finish them don't you so that's one of the things that we're going to be doing on Material Mondays just doing a stitch project getting something finished and maybe just hanging out um, hanging out yeah on the video and you can you can do whatever stitch project you're doing and uh, you might even I see I'm not even promising anything I'm saying we might even throw in a live <laughs> might even throw in a little live I'm not sure I don't know I'm still getting used to all of this you say um, but yeah, let's, uh, so sometimes it's as simple as that, that you want to just add a little element, let's come in here, see just those few stitches could make the difference and I can always come in with a different colour and add some more stitches if I want but I just wanted to add just touches, specks of colour around here and pull out um, some of the vibrant colour that we've got going on just pull it out in different areas but as I say um, a lot will also be um, a lot of the colour will also be pulled out when I add the jewellery, broken jewellery, the um, beading, yeah we've got to have some beading going on in here and uh, and finish it up. Okay let's get on. Okay yeah so these um, I really love uh, working on these stitch projects and it really that was one of the things I said to myself after doing the handmade foam after doing the handmade foam I wanted to see how um, handmade foam stamps I wanted to see and I've still yet got to do that um, to work with some of them on fabric um, I've done a little bit which I've showed you um, in my 
uh, fabric journal but I want to do more on some of the fabric some of the larger pieces of fabric that I've got and do some stitch projects so I will keep you notified of how that is going so let's look at some of the um, We've got loads of resources I've been uploading on my course platform and um, I'm really excited about some of the resources I've got that you can take a look at. I've got the Art Hub and it's a collection of art resources that you may find useful. Some of the book reviews that I've done are there. Um, digital um, downloads that you, you can access um, some of them are there. I've got, um, as I said, book reviews, some product reviews, um, courses, um, not only um, links to some of my courses, we've got Ivy Newton courses, um, and she's got a whole selection of artists. So I share all the different courses that maybe you know you might be interested in, and you can find them on the Art Resource Hub. There's the um, for May, I was part of the Messy May for the um, Get Messy Art Journal and I showed you how to make recycled stamps and stencils. So I've taken that further, so I'll show you how to make the recycled stamps and stencils from different things that you can find and I also go on to create the um, image that you can see in the art journal and the collage as well and then the other mini course that I've done is the art tags so I've given you a digital download of seven designs of art tags and then on that free course what I've done is show you how I would alter them so you can do anything you like with them. You can print them as many times as you like for non-commercial use, obviously. But um, you can do whatever you like. And I show you just um, a way that I would use it. And then I'll show you, um, with all the bits left over, I'll show you how I would alter um, the pages of a mini journal. So they're bonus videos. You get, there's about, um, 10 videos for that so that's um, really great you can have a look at that and again what I always say with my courses is try it with one supply try it with the supply of choice and then try it again and use different supplies and see what um, what supplies you like the best because sometimes you know if I like working with say neo colors sometimes with my journals and you know ink tense pencils and sometimes I'll use paints but what about other coloring pencils um, Derwent's got a few there's others um, out there that you can try um, other water soluble crayons and stuff like that so why not you know try the same thing and use different um, patterns the other thing with the art tags is that you can again you know create in whatever way you like um, if you join me on patreon for my patreons at the three dollar mark every month they get a digital download and I'll sh I give them a video of how to adapt this it's a digital download that you can color in so you can do that with it, you can paint it, you can, you know, do different things. And I normally um, alter the tags and then with the sheet, I usually create an image. You don't have to do that, but you can, you know, create an image or use the papers as background papers in your journal. So if you join me on my $3 level, that's what you get. And the next level, they get a booklet of digital papers that they can um, that can be used in your art journals and things like that um, the other thing that's happening this month is the art and spirituality summit that's being organized by creative you and Larissa Russell so I'm teaching a lesson on there and I would love to share how I do it um, and create this lesson there's also a mini interview, so we talk about, you know, spirituality, what that means for me. Um, it's just a brief discussion. So I hope you can join us, and the link is below. You can check it out. There's 30 of us um, taking part, and there's 
people coming from different aspects of spirituality, I'll put it like that. So you can, you know, see what you, um, see what take, what their take is. And um, you get free access, I think for five days over the summit. And, um, and then if you want unlimited access, you can, you know, pay the VIP price, whatever it is. So that is that. Um, every month as well, we do the art collaborations on my YouTube channel. So again, if you want to support an artist, um, it's totally free every month. I'm part of three different collaborations. The Artsy Second Sunday, so every second Sunday of the month, um, we have, there's about 10, 12 of us who work towards a theme and um, share our process with you. For the, um, it's organised by Alaya Art, also known as, um, by Martha from Alaya Art. Um, the third Saturday art, as it says, the third Saturday, again, we get together with a theme. And then there's a mixed media Tuesday um, collaboration. So that's on the second Tuesday of the month. And the theme is open. And that's where I usually try more of the mixed media projects. So, you know, things with dimension, um, um, assemblage art and things like that. Um, the last one I did, I'll show you. <laughs> I like this one. I really do like this journal that I created. The, the more recent one that I did was this journal. Isn't it lovely? It's again a composition notebook. I'm going to be making this as my, um, I've been seeing images in magazines that I've been inspired by and there was an artist, there's an artist on Instagram. I think she left a comment on one of my posts and when I visited her I just thought, oh that's such a lovely idea using magazine images that inspire you in a journal and I'm just going to dedicate this this journal for that purpose but I was going through ma a magazine and I'm inspired by not only you know animals and colour and just pattern so the pattern on this lady's um, top I just thought it was so pretty that I'm just going to be making up um, journal pages just with magazines and we'll see how we get on so next month I'll be able to share with you maybe do a flip through of some of the pages but as we um, bring everything together now we think about what inspires us what brings us comfort what um, the tip for the week you know thinking about um, how we can motivate ourselves and sometimes we are not, we, we, we can't just be rushing around doing stuff. Sometimes we just need to be still and listen for the inspiration. Sometimes it's a bird song. Um, sometimes a thought, because you're still, you've allowed the thought to come in and sit with you. You've allowed yourself to reflect. And that's one of the things for me that's really important in this creative journey it's it is about yes i'm inspired yes i create yes i love using different things supplies i'm inspired by so many different um things around me um, people around me conversations that you have but being still and reflecting and taking it all in trying new things, sitting with them, not saying I'm never going to do that or I never want to try that or I don't have time for that because before you know it you're going to be stitching <laughs> and that's that was my journey I was just like I ain't got time for stitching, I got time for slow stitching but it's the very thing that I needed at the start of the big global event that we had a few years ago um, it was a thing that kept me together. I was slow stitching 
and I was reflecting, I was reveling and, and being joyful and looking at the things that I was grateful for. Just that act of slowing down and slowing down meant that I was reconnecting with my creativity. So I want you, I want to encourage you that, you know, the things that you want to do, want to try, want to achieve, all of that is possible. And you just, you need to have a plan. You need to be clear about where you want to go. You might not know how you're going to get there, but you know you want to do it. Like, you know, you know, I know I wanted to create a large piece of artwork. And so that's what I'm doing. Working on, I'm finishing it off. I didn't show you, did I? Maybe I will. Not next month. Anyway, so yeah, it's, it, so it is about doing all those things. And, um, thinking about what motivates you, as I said, thinking about the quick question, thinking about changing your perspective. And we've talked about this before. Um, and just taking one, one foot in front of the other, every step of the way you will be met. You just have to believe it and you have to have the faith and take that step. And I'm here to encourage you. I'm one of your biggest cheerleaders. So remember, please leave a comment. Let me know how you're getting on. Let me know what things, what are, what is inspiring you. Um, let me know what things out of what we've talked about today kind of resonated with you and share what you're doing. You know, um, I, I'd love to see what things you're working on. So take care for now and I will see you again very soon.